Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including new production updates for the $25,000 Tesla, how all Teslas just got more expensive, the new BMW batteries said to be beating Tesla, the latest Cybertruck updates and more, so let's get into it. First up today, a quick update about battery types across Tesla's lineup and where they are sourced. This information is important for two reasons, tax credits and usable daily range. Tesla ships most of their cars with a chemistry that favors being charged to 80% each day. This is what's best for battery longevity and they encourage you only to charge up to 100% on road trips. The rest of the time that would mean that if you achieve the EPA's top range of 330 miles, you're only really wanting to use 264 miles of it at a time. LFP battery chemistry, on the other hand, has the benefit of preferring to be charged to 100%. 100% is best for longevity, and Tesla ships their standard range Model 3 with this battery pack in the US currently. Overseas, the Model Y rear-wheel drive also uses this. Effectively, it means that your daily range on a rear-wheel drive Model 3 can be 272 miles, again, if you achieve the EPA's estimate. Recently, Tesla finally relaunched a standard range Model Y in the US. It gets a 260 mile EPA range, 135 mile per hour top speed, a 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, and starts at $43,990. It's a great product, but most, including me, assumed it used the same LFP pack as the Model 3. Now we have learned that this is not the case. Troy Teslite compiles Tesla's battery sourcing into great charts and recently updated the chart to show where everything comes from. Out of Tesla's Fremont factory, the Model S and X use 18650 cells made by Panasonic Japan. The Model 3 rear-wheel drive uses CATL LFP cells from CATL China, and then the long range and performance use 2170 cells. Interestingly, long range comes from LG South Korea and performance comes from Panasonic Nevada. For the Model Y though, all all of these are 2170 cells made by Panasonic in Nevada, so this clearly shows us that the standard range Model Y uses the same chemistry as another Model Y, it's just a smaller pack. This is an important distinction because I previously thought you'd get the LFP benefit here, and this isn't the case. Instead, a rear-wheel drive Model Y will need to be charged to 80% each day for best longevity, giving you a usable 208 mile EPA range estimate each day. This still is plenty for many people, but important to be aware of. Out of Giga Texas, the Model Y cells come from Panasonic Nevada, and the Cybertruck 4680 cells come from Tesla. In Berlin, the standard range Model Y uses BYD Blade LFP cells made by BYD China, and long range and performance use 2170 cells made by LG China. Lastly, in Shanghai, the standard range Model Y and 3 use CATL LFP cells, and the long range and performance 3 and Y use 2170 cells made by LG China. This is a great example of Tesla's diversification with battery sourcing, and it's cool to keep up on where everything is coming from and why. At the end of the day though, it really only matters how your car functions and if it gets a range that you're happy with. One other aside is just a quick reminder that every new Tesla sold comes with basic autopilot. This includes traffic aware cruise control and auto steer, which keeps you centered in your lane on the freeway. It can drive anywhere roads are clearly marked and do so up to 85 miles per hour, no upgrade necessary. Tesla seems to have removed any mention of this on their website, likely to get customers to pay for an enhanced autopilot or FSD upgrade, but I do not agree with this approach. I've had multiple people reach out who had no idea that this car even came with basic autopilot because this is nowhere to be found on Tesla's main pages. The enhanced autopilot and FSD upgrades are not worth the cost for the majority of buyers and the included autopilot system does a fantastic job. It's the system I use all the time. Next up today, a few updates for upcoming Tesla products. Another Project Highland Model 3 was spotted testing in the US completely uncovered. That's a pretty rare sight at this point, and it of course has manufacturer plates from Tesla. This one is in fact a made in China Model 3, as we can see from the badge on the left side of the trunk. It was spotted testing on Highway 280 in California, around the general area that Tesla operates, so they are doing some sort of validation and could be comparing the made in China spec with the US spec. Clearly, Tesla's Fremont factory is lagging behind on producing this new car, and that's because Giga Shanghai has ended up as Tesla's most successful factory. With that said, the Highland Model 3 is doing well in reviews out of Giga Shanghai so far, and it's expected to come to the US soon enough. Hopefully, it's able to match that level of quality when coming out of their US factory. Regarding factories though, Tesla's Giga Berlin is still a new factory scaling up. Right now it only produces the Model Y, and it produces a couple cool colors exclusive to that factory, but Elon Musk just visited that factory to check in on its progress. Overall, he seems happy with how the factory is doing, and detailed two aspects he plans to change in the future. First, as detailed in his tweet, he said, we are going to cover all the concrete with art. 
But more importantly to customers, he confirmed for the first time that Tesla plans to make their $25,000 EV at this factory. This is the car that has been in talks for a while at Tesla, but we know after investor day that it's a process to get there. They are rethinking everything from the ground up to bring down cost and make this a profitable, scalable $25,000 vehicle. Originally, that meant that they were going to build it at their new Giga Mexico factory, which they announced at that event. Now we've heard that Giga Texas is going to produce this vehicle before Giga Mexico, but furthermore, Elon confirmed that Berlin is going to make it. This is something that makes a lot of sense. If Tesla cracks the code on this affordable EV, they're going to want to make it everywhere possible that they can, but this is the first time we've heard it confirmed by Tesla themselves for Giga Berlin. This is very exciting to hear because it shows further investment at the factories Tesla already has built and is growing, rather than them deciding to build another factory to build the $25,000 EV. Of course, these are long-term plans, but it seems that as we get closer to its launch, the $25,000 EV will first come out of Giga Texas. That is where Tesla's main engineers can work alongside the assembly line. Then they will take that, paste it into Giga Berlin for the European market, and do the same at Giga Mexico. So far, we only have concepts and renders of what this car could look like, but there are some pretty cool ones out there. Franz's initial robo-taxi concept showed up in Elon Musk's biography, and we know that they now plan to make these cars very similar, so it will likely take a lot of inspiration from this, and any other way that they can make this as efficient as possible. Other renders give it a cyber design, since Tesla will be releasing this after learning from the Cybertruck, and then others simply look like a smaller Model Y. We know Tesla will have to be practical here, but they'll also want to do something different than we're used to seeing. Either way, it will be coming out of Giga Berlin as well as Texas soon enough. Next up today, BMW has come out saying that their next generation EVs will outdo Tesla in range and battery tech. In a recent interview with Automotive News Group, BMW's production head said that the automaker doesn't see a gap to Tesla, and that Tesla may in fact need to catch up to BMW once the German automaker's sixth generation batteries enter production with the new class family of EVs starting in 2025. Right away, it's an interesting proposition since that is still two years away and Tesla isn't standing still. But in any case, they say their new battery hardware, highlighted by switching to cylindrical cells, will target 20% greater energy density and up to 30% more range. In turn, this will result in up to 500 miles per charge and 60% lower production-related carbon emissions than the current prismatic cells that BMW uses. Furthermore, their cells are 46 millimeters in diameter, like Tesla 4680 cells, but measure 95 or 120 millimeters high. Quote, we looked at high energy compared with the production cost. High energy isn't possible in a big cell. The cylindrical cell is the way to go. It's our choice. It offers more flexibility. Right now, production of sample cells is underway, and volume production will be handled by CATL and EV Energy at six factories. First off, if BMW can beat Tesla in range, then that will be great. Competition is a wonderful thing. But this article is quite interesting. Quote, BMW claims Tesla is no longer ahead in EV range battery tech. So what makes battery tech an EV range? In reality, it means that a customer is able to buy a car with a particular range. Here, BMW doesn't say that they have achieved 20% greater energy density and 30% more range, but that they target that. Their 500 mile range estimate is likely WLTP, around 446 miles EPA when converted, and we have no idea what size pack or type of car this is. Just achieving 446 miles of EPA range doesn't mean much if we don't know what the car's shape is or how big the battery pack is that's delivering that range in the first place. Additionally, BMW is currently working on production of sample cells. That's great, but a vehicle battery pack uses thousands of cells per car. CATL and EV Energy actually have to produce these cells for BMW at scale, and then furthermore, BMW has to deliver them in a vehicle. At that point, sometime hopefully in 2025, they'll deliver a car using this upgraded technology, and Tesla will be two years further on the battery tech that they use in their cars. Essentially, this whole view by BMW's production lead seems built on the idea that Tesla is standing still, and that it's fair to compare a battery cell that is scaled on millions of EVs each year to that being tested in a lab. Maybe this will come true, but for now, this is a great example of EV news that doesn't really mean anything for Tesla's demand or lead. Let me know when I can buy this BMW with better range and battery tech than a Tesla. Tesla has been beaten by others like Lucid in this regard, but it doesn't seem to matter because at the end of the day, cost is the most important thing. 
Next up today, Tesla has increased prices across the board for most buyers. While their vehicle prices have been down for the most part, aside from small increases here and there, the main equation that matters to many buyers is a monthly payment. When it comes to this, prices are up more than ever, and Tesla just increased their financing rates for a 72-month loan from 6.49% up to 6.69%. For an 84-month loan, this went from 7.36% up to 7.61%. An 84-month loan is quite long for a vehicle, but they introduced this option to help monthly payments be a little more bearable, even though you're paying more over the course of the loan. At Tesla's recent earnings call, Elon Musk spoke about this, saying, the vast majority of people buying a car is about the monthly payment. As interest rates rise, the proportion of that monthly payment that is interest increases naturally. If interest rates keep rising, you just fundamentally reduce affordability. He detailed the fact that even though the Model Y has come down in price in recent months and years, the true cost at the consumer level has stayed about the same. The car's price went down and interest rates went up, and this is a big deal for Tesla's sales. Quote, cost is not an optional thing for most people. It is a necessary thing. Ultimately, they're working on breaking out of the investor, passionate tech crowd who is willing to pay up for an EV. They need to break into the general public, and right now, that's pretty tough since most people are buying with loans and seeing the same cost for an EV as it has been in recent years. While the Model Y has become the best-selling car globally and looks to continue that trend, it's important to recognize the true situation here. A Model Y may start at $43,990 from Tesla, but out the door with taxes, fees, and financing, those things can add up quite a bit. Hopefully we'll see interest rates ease in the coming months and years so that Tesla's price drops truly mean that buyers' monthly payments are lowered. On the direct pricing side of things, this past week, Tesla did raise the price of one option, black paint on the Model Y. Black used to be a $1,500 upgrade, but now it's $2,000, the same cost as red. Next up today, a couple pretty exciting updates for the Model S that are likely to trickle down to Tesla's new Model 3 soon enough. First, with the release of the refreshed Model 3 over in Europe and China, the Model S is now lacking a few premium features. One such feature is a customizable ambient lighting strip. According to Tesla app leaks, found by Tesla hacker Green the Only, this feature is coming soon to a slightly refreshed version of the Model S and X. As for other changes to the Model S and X, not a Tesla app says, quote, one of our sources has confirmed that the S slash X will not only receive Tesla's latest interior lighting feature in an upcoming refresh, but that it will also be outfitted with a front bumper camera. It's unknown whether Tesla will introduce both these features simultaneously or in a phased manner. Considering Tesla's known strategy of incorporating upgrades as they deplete available parts, it wouldn't be surprising if they took the latter route. This would mark the first US car Tesla is shipping with a front camera if this comes prior to the first Cybertruck deliveries on November 30th. Seemingly, it should greatly improve visibility for FSD, and in particular, help with that parking sensor functionality that they now ship just using cameras. If we do see these changes come to the Model S and X soon enough, it may just be that the front camera arrives soon on a refreshed Model 3 once it comes to the US. On the other side of things, though, is an updated sport interior that we've never seen from Tesla before. In the past, a performance Model 3 has been nearly indistinguishable from a base model inside, but that soon may change. We heard about this update from Green the Only originally, displaying Tesla's model of the sport interior that has seats with bolstered side support and headrests, but now we have leaked photos of what these seats actually look like. These leaked online and carry a very distinct design with a plaid badge embedded in the seat. Even the plaid Model S has very few indicators for what makes it plaid inside, so this would be quite a big change. Based on these leaks paired with those in firmware, it looks like a plaid version of this seat may arrive on the Model S first. Then eventually a ludicrous version should arrive on the Model 3 performance. I think this design is pretty great, but I do think that the plaid badge could distinguish itself a bit from ludicrous by Tesla adding color to it. As for the authenticity of this leak, we can clearly see Tesla's official labeling on the side of the disassembled seats in this photo, and these photos come from the official Tesla service manual. This seat is on its way very soon, so we will just be waiting to see how Tesla rolls it out. My guess is that it will come first to the Model S Plaid, maybe in a track package, and then to the Model 3 Ludicrous, and eventually the Model Y Ludicrous if they go that direction. At the end of the day, it's just a seat, but it would be something special that makes these cars stand out further from their cheaper trims. Next up today, the latest Cybertruck updates and sightings. First off, the Cybertruck was spotted side by side with the Chevy Suburban at night. It gives us a bit of a good comparison to competing trucks, although it's a much older year Suburban. 
Over in another area, the Cybertruck was spotted going through an automatic car wash. Most likely, this is less about cleaning the truck this way and more about just seeing how it does in an automatic car wash. An automatic car wash isn't the best way to take care of a car, but it's the easiest way and the way that many people wash their cars. So the Cybertruck will surely be going through many of them. The stainless steel should hold up fine, but could see different types of residue than we're used to seeing. Elon Musk was on Joe Rogan's podcast again and brought the Cybertruck along. One test they did was shooting an arrow at the Cybertruck. It dented it, but didn't go through, demonstrating the strength of the stainless steel. Also on the podcast episode though, Elon confirmed that the Cybertruck glass will not be what they demoed at the Cybertruck unveil. They are going with standard non-bulletproof glass, which is something we had heard through rumors a few weeks ago. It makes sense, but will disappoint some. As for production, Elon talked about them hoping to manufacture 200,000 Cybertrucks a year, which is lower than his previous estimated 250,000. This could be an updated lower production goal or simply rounding since it is an estimate. Over in Palo Alto, a Cybertruck was spotted towing a Model Y, which is a pretty good demo of a tow. Including the trailer, this should probably weigh around 5,000 pounds. So the Cybertruck should be able to tow quite a bit more than this as well. For the storage in the Cybertruck, a great video demonstrated the rear tailgate coming down, the bed space, and the sub-bed storage. Here it's storing a cover for the truck, which is often what we see stored here in sightings. On the left side of the bed, we can also see a cover for what should be a 120 volt and 240 volt outlet. An air compressor is also expected there, but we'll have to see what features this delivers in its final version. Over in Manhattan Beach, a couple cyber trucks were spotted, and it was confirmed that this was Top Gear filming with his truck. They are getting their launch content ready to go, it seems, with Tesla loaning them the Cybertruck, and this is a fairly new approach that we saw them first do with the Model 3 Highland in Europe. Maybe Tesla could loan me one to review one ahead of time? Eh? Eh, eh, worth a try. Anyways, in their video, we see full confirmation of the Cybertruck's powered front trunk. This is finally the first Tesla to deliver a front trunk that opens on its own. It's larger than any of Tesla's other vehicles' front trunks, but is smaller when compared to other electric trucks on the market. In part, this is because the Cybertruck is shorter than others. Those trucks driving around were photographed properly by Samantha Gades. These are some of the best photos yet of the Cybertruck, and it's pretty exciting to see. Lastly, the Cybertruck was spotted utilizing four-wheel steering in a very interesting way we've yet to see, crab walking. This is a feature GM has shipped in trucks, and this would be something that Tesla can deliver with four wheels that steer on their own. However, many are skeptical that this is actually a feature they are testing. Instead, they could be troubleshooting issues with the four-wheel steering in this truck. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see all the best accessories to get for a Model Y or 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.